محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم طب القلوب ودواؤها وعافية الأبدان وشفاؤها ونور الأبصار وضياؤها صلى عليك الله يا علم الهدى ما هبت النسائم وما ناحت على الأيك الحمائم My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam our sons and daughters the future of Islam insha'Allah rabbil alameen Alhamdulillah Thumma alhamdulillah Thumma alhamdulillah Praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the cherisher and the sustainer of the whole universe most gracious and most merciful Why I repeat praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala three times today a very simple reason Alhamdulillah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has enabled us to live this year in order to witness the month of Ramadan to recognize the month of Ramadan to celebrate the month of Ramadan to welcome the month of Ramadan the way it should yet some people were among us last year witnessing Ramadan here somewhere else they are no longer with us they passed away that's why you should be thankful and grateful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has extended our life to witness another month of Ramadan with its mercy, forgiveness, release of the hellfire and having the blessings of it enjoying reading and reciting Quran, benefiting from the Salah, Taraweeh and Qiyamul Layl and Zakah and your Dua while some others cannot do it anymore. That's why we have, to, we have to be thankful and grateful to him. Remember this. Allah, though we have many bounties, many, many, many. If you try to count the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has given to us without even asking him, we'll never be able to count them. They are countless. They are endless. And we have to be thankful and grateful to all of them, especially when it comes to the month of Ramadan, the month of Ramadan. The question might be, uh, are we ready for the month of Ramadan? And if we are, what is our plan for the month of Ramadan? What we're planning to do? It would be a specific plan, different plan, something we have to recognize and celebrate and uh, welcome and capitalize on, or it would be like any other months of, of the year. That's a special, very, very, very special month for all of us, especially when you think of hadith of al-Bayhaqi and Jabir radiallahu anhum ajma'in an Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That hadith I shared with you several time, times, but I, I thought it would be a good reminder for all of us to shed some lights on this hadith as part of our preparation for Ramadan and celebration and recognizing the month of Ramadan. That hadith as Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam it's one of the best gift ever given to an ummah, a nation along with the Prophet. Very, very special, very unique never be given to any of the previous nations before. SubhanAllah. How? As the wording of the hadith, the saying of the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَعْطِيَتْ أُمَّتِي فِي شَهْرِ رَمَضَانِ خَمْسًا لَمْ يُعْطَهُنَّ نَبِيٌّ قَبْلِي Allahu Akbar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, has bestowed upon us, has deliver that gift to us during the month of Ramadan never be given to any nation before us we're the only one very unique as a special gift and as 
a special reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to us. What are those five things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to the Ummah of Muhammad during the month of Ramadan? One, فَإِنَّهُ إِذَا كَانَ أَوَّلُ لَيْلَةٍ مِّنْ شَهْرِ رَمَضَانِ يَنْظُرُ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ إِلَيْهِمْ وَمَنْ نَظَرَ اللَّهُ إِلَيْهِ لَمْ يُعَذِّبْهُ أَبَدًا الله أكبر The first night of the month of Ramadan and tonight is the first night of the month of Ramadan Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen with Amja the association of Muslims jurists of America have declared that Friday today is the last day of the month of Sha'ban tomorrow insha'Allah Rabbil Alameen will be the first day of Ramadan insha'Allah Rabbil Alameen we took from that wonderful jurist هذا مجلس الفقه الإسلامي في أمريكا الشمالية with that declaration with those wonderful jurists have been serving the Muslim community here in America the first night will be tonight are we ready for that night are we and do we know what is expected and how we will celebrate such a thing the first night tonight inshallah and and we ready are we ready for it the first night allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will look at us look at us and whoever allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whomever allah subhanahu wa ta'ala look at allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never never punish them at all never afflict any kind of punishment on them tonight yes this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be doing for the ummah of Muhammad yes but the question would be are we ready for this yani when there is a declaration or someone or some TV stations or some announcements saying that oh that event is going to take place uh, tonight at 5 p.m one of the best event ever if you'd like to watch it if you'd like to attend please and it's for free no tickets no nothing no money we we rush into such a thing to enjoy but how about if it is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tonight tonight would be looking at each and every single one of us of the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam now some people may argue saying that doesn't Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala see all of us yes he does but looking is totally different than seeing I can see you all of you but I don't look at you I don't have that communication with you I don't have that feeling toward you. I don't care really much about you. I'm not really concerned about anything in your life. You're just a body around. You're just a human being. But when I look at you, as they are saying in here, right in your eyes, I mean to look at you. I am more than seeing you. I'm about to deliver a message to you. I'm contacting with you. I'm communicating with you without even saying thing. Just to look at my face and say, MashaAllah, Wallahi, very cheerful, smiley face and looking at me, I would start asking you questions. Do you have good news for me? Do you, are you happy with me? Are you pleased with me? Uh, you you, you, you want to say something I've never heard of before. That's at the level of the human being. But how about if it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is looking at each and every single one of us in order to convey a specific message for us. 
if I am looking at you, I will never, never afflict any punishment on you for the rest of your life, or even in the hereafter. Maybe the question would be, am I qualified to that from Allah? This is totally up to you. If you're waiting for him tonight, and when we say tonight, immediately after Salat al-Maghrib, because a lot of people would be saying, when? Immediately after Salat al-Maghrib. Okay? Till Fajr time. And this would include the first Taraweeh prayer at the first night before the month of Ramadan. So we have this. So from Maghrib till Isha, what you'll be doing? Busy watching TV, uh, playing, eating. Keep in mind, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is looking at you. And please, when you're ready, wait to communicate with him. Feeling that it is a matter of a belief. It is a matter of iman. It is a matter of your heart is opening up to see that look of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you communicate with him without saying anything. It might have something to say when he looks at you, ask him for something or be indulged in a dua or wish for something to happen for you, your spouse, your children, your family, your community, the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the hadith is not saying any of these. It is just looking at us as an honor, as the best thing ever any human being would have. Oh, Wallahi, I'm afraid if I say that, you know, that big figure person in the community or in the country or in the world uh, would give you a call tonight so be ready for that call I'm not sure some of us would be doing what but how what if it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for the rest of the year never happened it's only tonight you choose to be busy doing some other things do if you choose not to, but you're waiting for that great and wonderful look by Allah to you, wait for it. And of course, some of us, if not all of us, would be saying, what can we do? At least with the purest heart ever, the purest heart ever, wait for him. Never be indulged in vain talk or wasting your time or being busy doing some other things have that great feeling Allah now is looking at me and I deserve that look from him and I'm involved with that thing you feel it you're the only one no one can tell from Maghrib time till Fajr time including the Taraweeh prayer, including the Qiyamul Layl, including that night prayer, if you'd like to have from Maghrib till Isha, waiting for him to look at you, reading Quran, be indulged in a prayer, having a specific dua, till Salat al Isha, half Salat al Isha Jama'ah, half Taraweeh, still Allah is looking at you. After Taraweeh, you relax, be ready for Suhoor, be ready for the first day to start your fasting, insha'Allah, Rabbil Alameen. But take some time off from this dunya, be with Allah for a while. And you see, the rest of the year for you would look like what? You want to be promoted? Allah will grant it for you. Good health, Allah will grant it for you. Happiness and pleasure in this life, Allah will grant it for you. A good relationship with your spouse, Allah will grant it for you. A good relationship between you as parents and children, Allah will grant it for you. 
with the rest of your family members and the extended family, Allah will grant it for you. Just be waiting for him to look at you and say, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, that's something. No one had it before. The Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And it's up to you, either to take advantage of that wonderful and the, the most wonderful and the greatest opportunity ever. You take advantage of it or wait till next year if you are alive and you would witness another chance. And I'm sure all of you are smart enough. You will, inshallah, Rabbil Alameen, taking care of that wonderful moment with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَإِنَّهُ إِذَا كَانَ أَوَّلُ لَيْلَةٍ مِّنْ شَهْرَ رَمَضَانٍ يَنْظُرُ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ إِلَيْهِمْ مَنْ نَظَرَ اللَّهُ إِلَيْهِ لَمْ يُعَذِّبْهُ أَبَدًا Allah, ya akhwa, we are in time. We need that look from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we look around, things are not going to the right direction. Things are not that good. At the individual levels, at the family levels, at the community level, at the nation level, or even at the level of all Muslims, 1.6 billion Muslims. Things do not look good. But can you believe it? And I, I have to be honest with you and share this with you. Allah all over the Islamic world, waiting and waiting and waiting for the declaration of the beginning of Ramadan. Can you believe it? It is not officially announced in most of the Muslim countries in the world. As if official people who are responsible for such a thing do not even want to declare the beginning of the month of Ramadan. And I was just checking all websites, looking at all news. Wallahi. Yesterday, last night, early today, nothing. Except that wonderful and a great organization, Amja. The association of those wonderful Jews. هذا مجلس الفقهاء في أمريكا علماء أفاضل took upon themselves citing the moon it wasn't cited it means Sha'ban got to be completed it means Friday the last day of Sha'ban it means Saturday in the first day of Ramadan يعني even to make people happy to celebrate and welcome the month of Ramadan is not even there as if it is a plan. But to me, I can see it, it is a satanic plan. Even for Muslims not to welcome and celebrate Ramadan. While Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, I will look at you at that night. We take the advantage and wait for that look from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What would be the second thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given as part of that gift to the Ummah of Muhammad? Never be given to anyone before them. فَإِنَّ خَلُوفَ أَفْوَاهِهِمْ الرَّائِحَ حِينَ يَمْسُونَ أَطْيَبُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ مِنْ رِيحِ الْمِسْكِ While we're fasting, because we do not have to eat that otter, that smell coming out of our stomach. It's not the otter by the mouth, by the way, because we're brushing our teeth and everything. But it is that odor, that smell coming out of our stomach while we're fasting. By the evening time, it is on the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala much, much better than the smell and the odor of musk. Don't worry about this. It is really bothering us as a human being. And we do not want to come closer, not to let anyone have that smell. But it is in the sight of Allah, the best, more ever than the smell and the odor of the musk. أَطْيَبُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ مِنْ رَائِحَةِ الْمِسْكِ أَطْيَبُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ 
من رائحة المسك. Don't worry about people. Don't worry about yourself. But how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would view this for you or how to take it for you in behalf of you. Three, you'll be surprised. Maybe you'll be shocked. Maybe you won't because you know it. But this is true things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving to us, to the Ummah of Muhammad, never be given to any of the nations before. فَإِنَّ الْمَلَائِكَةَ تَسْتَغْفِرُ لَهُمْ كُلَّ يَوْمٍ وَلَيْلَةٍ الله أكبر All angels All angels How many? I do not know Allah only knows how many of the angels It's an endless number Thousands maybe Millions maybe Billions but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created them in order to do specific things. One of them at that night, tonight, and for the rest of the Ramadan, Allah is giving order the malaika, the angels, to do what? Ask Allah to forgive all of them every day and every night. In behalf of you. Yani even if you choose not to ask Allah to forgive you, for the sins you have committed, Malaika in behalf of you, but the order and command of Allah will make that istighfar on behalf of you, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give to forgive you every day and every night. Yani I'm, I'm just uh, yani, I'm taking a break of istighfar. I, I'm, I'm not I'm not even saying astaghfirullah I, I'm not even bothered to say it or to do it or to be indulged in it. Or how many times they have to do it? After salah, how many times? During the salah, how many times? Before the salah, how many times? During the day, how many times? During the night, how many times? Don't worry about all of these. Let it be done by the malaika for you. Can you imagine that istighfar is done by the order and command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? By the malaika? By? Yani it is not you do it for your brother, and you do it for your brother, and you do it for your brother, you do it for your wife, do it for your spouse, do it for children as a human being, to do it for each other. No, 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 no. It is the job of the malaika. It is the duty of the malaika. It is the obligation from Allah to malaika in behalf of you to do it for you. Tani, what else would be looking for, Wallahi? Wallahi, tell me, akhwa. Tell me, what else? What else? part of the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yet some people are not really aware of that la jilna fi rahab al-mustafa al-birru la yabla wal-dhambu la yunsa wal-dayyanu la yamud kullu bin adam khatta wa khayru al-khatta ina al-tawabun wa al-ta'ibun al-dhambi kamal la dhambala idu Allah wa antum muqinun bil-ijabah الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى الحمد لله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأصلي وأسلم على رسول الله صلاة وتسليما يليقان بالحبيب المصطفى النبي المجتبى صلوات ربي وسلام عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وتابعيه وتابعي تابعيه إلى يوم الدين My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam Our sons and daughters the future of Islam إن شاء الله رب العالمين حديث رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أعطيت أمتي في شهر رمضان خمسا لم يعطهن نبي قبلي فإنه إذا كان أول ليلة من شهر رمضان ينظر الله عز وجل إليهم من نظر الله إليه لم يعذبه أبدا فإن خلوف أفواههم رائحة أفواههم حين يمسون أطيب عند الله من ريح المسك فإن الملائكة تستغفر لهم كل يوم وليلة these are the three things by the order and command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would be done there, especially the first night when Allah is looking at us. The order of our mouth would be on the stomach, would be much better on the sight of Allah than the order of the, of the mosque and the malaika make istighfar for us day and night, continuously. 
It is not only a full-time job. No lie. It is 24-7. 24-7. For each and every second of the day and night, Malaika is making a step far. Ask Allah to forgive you on behalf of you. Number four. إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَزَّ وَجَلْ يَأْمُرُ جَنَّتَهُ فَيَقُولْ اِسْتَعِدِّي وَتَزَيَّنِي لِعِبَادِي أُوشُكُ أَنْ يَسْتَرِيحُ مِنْ تَعْبِ الدُّنْيَا إِلَى دَارِي وَكَرَامَتِي الله أكبر يعني we thought the first three things would be mainly for the dunya at night Allah will look at us and while we're fasting the order of our stomach and the istighfar day and night in this dunya by the malaika but also he never forget about the hereafter the hereafter and as we all know it's one of two ways either jannah or nar is a paradise with the heavy good deeds in our record or hellfire with less of our good deeds and our record there. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also is giving the order and the command to the Jannah. To the Jannah. To paradise. Saying that, Sta'iddi, be ready. Watazayyani, the best ornament ever in Jannah must be there. Istaiddi very generic. When I say, be ready, I'm gonna come and visit with you. Well, clean the house, vacuum the carpet, have a good meal, some foods, and you know, people be well dressed, and that will istaidad, yani. Be ready, the preparation. But Allah is making the preparation as well as the best ornament وَتَزَيَّنِي to celebrate and if you add roses everywhere at your house in order to welcome me this is part of تَزَيُّن an ornament perfume everywhere this and that and extra of being prepared for, for that visit but from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala اِسْتَعِدِّي وَتَزَيَّنِي لِعِبَادِي and here is ta'iddi wa tazayani in an absolute concept. It did not tell us what kind of preparation. But it is in accordance to the wish of Allah. An ornament in Jannah, that beautification of Jannah, also in accordance to the will of Allah. Ista'iddi. وَتَزَيَّنِي أُوشُكُ أَنْ يَسْتَرِيحُ مِنْ تَعَبِ الدُّنْيَا إِلَى دَارِ وَكَرَامَتِي They have enough in this dunya. They have a lot of fatigue, a lot of struggle, a lot of striving, a lot of agony, a lot of sadness. A lot of go on and on and on and on in this dunya as each and every single one of us has. Looking for a nicer job, looking to be promoted, looking for some money, looking for a nice location for your house, looking for another car, reliable one, accommodate yourself in winter in Minnesota and snow and cold, so on and so forth. Provide for your children, have enough money, help your family back home. It's a lot to be taken care of. And Allah is telling the Jannah, okay, they had enough. The Jannah be ready for them in order for them to enjoy and relax. As if, okay, my vacation this year, two weeks, one of those Hawaiian island, I'm away from everyone. I'm going to even, you know, disconnect my phone. No Facebook, no nothing. I want to relax. But you travel, you spend money. And, and it has to be a good budget in order to enjoy. And sometimes it wasn't that enjoyable. You know, weather was not that good. 
uh, we did not have enough money to go and visit, you know, with that, uh, this and that, we, but anyhow, it was better than nothing. Better than nothing. But for Jannah, it is the best ever. The best ever. But the question would be, I will be in Jannah. Did I do enough of work and good deeds to be in Jannah? You should. In order to be granted, as Allah is promising this, at the first night of Ramadan, استعدي وتزيني لعبادي فإنهم أوشك أن يستريعوا من تعب الدنيا. Allah put it as a grant for you. So honor this grant. Welcome this grant. Enjoy this grant. And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be among those to be in Jannah. First night of Ramadan. Tonight. Tonight. Tonight and the whole days and nights of Ramadan would be the same for us till the last night. The last night. This is now the night of farewell as we have 20 days and 20 nights of welcoming and enjoying and having the mercy of Allah at the first 10 and the forgiveness on the second 10 and release from the hellfire on the last 10. The last night what would happen? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying إِنَّهُ إِذَا كَانَ آخِرُ لَيْلَةٍ غَفَرَ اللَّهُ لَهُمْ جَمِيعًا Ya Allah Last night of Ramadan All of us will be forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala All of us No exception Will be forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the little things here and there you do during the month of Ramadan. Just reciting some Quran once in a while. But attend Taraweeh prayer as much as you can. Be indulged in learning more about Islam. Your Salah and your Siyam and your Zakah and your wonderful charitable contribution to those who are in need. It is not that much to do. But it would help. You'll be among those ones, insha'Allah, Rabbil Alameen, be having that wonderful grant from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I would ask all of you seriously, Wallahi, is it a good plan? Wallahi, you answer Allah, don't answer me. It's wonderful news, it's up to you. Should we take it or leave it? That's your decision. Would you benefit from all of this? Would you be so serious about it? Would you be so happy about it? 